Alright, so here we are. We are uh, finished with the build of the CCM MRC rebuild and I just wanted to go through the last final uh, steps and, and also how I'm going to flash the latest firmware of Betaflight onto this flight controller. Um, setting up a few basic things and then also uh, taking it out for the first test flight. So, I'm Nam Pham, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to go through here is a couple of minor TPU upgrades that I've designed and printed for this frame. I've got the uh, the arm guards on the ends here. Uh, some people don't like running them but I kind of do, I just like to keep the carbon fibre nice and fresh underneath if I do land awkwardly or crash. And um, you can see here that I've made it so that it is screwed on, uh, the screws go all the way through to the carbon fibre to mount the motors on directly so that it is uh, nice and secure. These other two screws here are mounted to hold on the TPU so it doesn't come off and I find that this is sufficient to hold the, the motor on quite securely and also the TPU as well. On the front here on the chin of the frame I do have this TPU piece printed as well just to protect the main bottom plate frame. Uh, generally as you come uh, down into the ground um, you do catch that bit of the chin there so I'm just protecting the frame there um, and that's it for the uh, TPU upgrades I might do a couple more around uh, the frame but uh, yeah that's it for now so uh, the next thing I wanted to explain is the camera um, I mounted it with the symbol of the word top pointing upwards at the top of the frame but as I plugged it into um, the battery into it and then connected a uh, my goggles to it. Uh, I noticed that the video was upside down so I'm not sure what's going on there. I just uh, basically took the camera out with the plates, flipped it upside down and put the top plate back on. So that was enough to get it working in the right orientation. Uh, I don't see any issues with doing it that way. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it for going over the frame and anything that I needed to do to it. Uh, so the next thing is we'll jump into Betaflight and get flashing with the latest firmware, configuring it up and then we'll go out for our first test flight. Alright, over here on Beta Flight I'm just going to plug in the flight controller. I'll wait till it connects. And there we go, it's connected. The last thing I was looking at was receiver but we'll go up to set up here. Uh, one of the first things I'd like to do uh, when I do get a uh, flight controller uh, and start configuring it is try to save everything that came from factory I don't know why I just kind of like to keep a backup of it but um, the first thing I'll do is just take a screenshot of the top here uh, and this just tells me um, the configurator version I'm using actually, uh, at least anyway and then there's the firmware that came with the flight controller so that's 4.3 and the target here as well um, as well so we can when we do the uh, flash of the beta flight version firmware into the flight controller we know what it can, uh, what target it is anyway so I just want to take a, a screenshot of that and then I'll do a backup of the flight controller as well um, in the CLI but before I do that I just want to keep a mental note of what things I have set up in the ports because I have modified a few things on here already from the last video that I did in terms of the Express LRS setup so here we have the serial RX set to the UART5 so that's what I've set the Express LRS receiver to um, and I soldered it to the UART5 and uh, on the right here you'll see that the uh, VTX uh, peripherals for is on IRC tramp on UART3 now I tried for quite some time to set up the VTX tables to get the smart audio or the VTX uh, control from Betaflight to work but unfortunately I couldn't get that to happen so um, I'm not sure why I tried different VTX tables and settings and everything uh, it didn't work uh, a few other people out there who said they could get it working but I followed their instructions and couldn't get it to work either so um, if anyone else out there knows um, please leave a comment 
down below uh, on if you know what VTX table needs to go in there um, <clears throat> or where I may be going wrong. Um, let me know and uh, we'll try and work it out, see if it works and if it does then I'll make another video just to let everyone else know and um, get everyone to uh, get their VTX um, configurable via Betaflight. So um, going back, I am going to take a note that the Serial RX is set on UART5 here. So once I flash the uh, the flight controller with the latest bleed of flight uh, version, then I can set this one up. And um, along with that, I know that we also did set up the receiver to be serial uh, UART receiver mode and also crossfire for the serial receiver provider. Um, so I think that's all I really uh, need to note at this time. So I'm just going to go to CLI and to back up the flight controller and all the settings we type in diff space all and it gives you all the differences in the settings from the uh, defaults. So these are all the settings that are on the flight controller at the moment and I'm just going to save it to a file onto my computer. So I'm just going to save it here and there we go. So once that's done, um, I'm happy to go and flash the latest Beta Flight uh, firmware. So I'll go to update firmware. And then I can wait till this comes up. All right, so we have, uh, we want to get the release ones. We don't want development. And we want to choose the board and now here is where we need to work it out. So we can click on auto detect and that's figured it out that it's the Matec F405 STD. Okay, so here yeah, the latest firmware release is the 4.3.2. So we can jump onto this. Um, so I'll leave it on that. I'll put it as full chip erase uh, and I'll leave this at manual board rate as well. So once that's all set i think we just scroll down load the firmware from online okay so now that is loaded we can scroll down just have a look at some of these things and then we can flash the firmware so i'll click this now All right, so we have the programming is successful. So uh, the flash and update of the firmware is done. Okay, so now we can try and connect to it again. Click on connect. And there are the custom defaults. So I'm just gonna apply the custom defaults. And connect again. All right, um, so a few problems uh, that it's been detected, there is no motor output protocol selected so we'll need to sort that out the accelerometer is enabled but it's not calibrated so we'll sort that one out as well so first thing let's get that accelerometer done so basically just go to set up on a flat bench put the quad down and hit calibrate and that's all sorted so we'll need to go to the motors now i think the next thing i wanted to do was flash the esc with the latest blue jay um, firmware as well so let's um, go over there all right so over here we're at the uh, ESC configurator for Blue Jay, and uh, initially I won't be able to connect because I do have beta flight still open up and connected so I'm just gonna hop over there and disconnect and then go back to the ESC configurator and click connect so over here I need to plug in a battery so I'm just going to get a battery and plug it in. And of course, with the props off, I'm going to hit the read settings. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try that again. sure why that's not working maybe I if I just um, kill beta flight disconnect from here and 
try that again. Connect and read the settings. No, that's not going to work. So I'm going to try and restart everything. So I'm unplugging the battery, unplugging the flight controller, plug in the flight controller again, and I'll plug in a battery. All right, let's try it and again. So connect, read settings. Okay, so I'm not sure why this is not working. Okay, so I think I've worked it out. Um, so here you can see that it shows that the following problems with your configuration were detected and there is no motor output protocol selected. So I worked it out that um, once I flashed it, it didn't have the ESC motor protocol. So selecting the DSHOT 300, which is what I will be using, um, you'll click on save and reboot. Okay, so you can hear it boot up there and this is now set so once we disconnect and then jump over to the ESC configurator we can go to connect and it shows the motors here which it wasn't before and then we can go read settings so you can see up here trying to read and it reads each one sequentially and it gets the setup here so we can see that what is um, on here at the moment is BL, BL Heli S 16.7 and so we can now flash these with the BlueJ firmware. So here we can go to flash all ESCs and on here we'll leave the firmware as BL, oh actually not leave it, we'll change it to BlueJ. Um, leave the ESC because it's auto detected that. I'll select the version as V016 and the PWM frequency, I'm going to set it at 48. So once that's done, we can click on flash. Now, I recommend that as soon as you do this, to not touch anything and let it do its thing to finish flashing the ESCs. So I don't know why, but when I do that, I sit very, very still. All right, so there you go. The uh, ESCs are all now flashed with BlueJ016 and at 48 kilohertz. So once that's done, we'll jump back over to Betaflight. Um, actually, before we do, I wanna just uh, play around with a melody editor and I like to just set one of the uh, tunes. So this is the great thing about BlueJ on a BL Heli S. ESC is you can actually put tunes in um, for the boot up, so similar to the um, BL32. So we can go and choose one. Um, we can do the Mario one up. Let's just play that one. I've got to turn up my volume. Play that again. All right, so I'll choose this one for now. And I'll have to select them, so accept this, accept that, accept and accept, and write the melodies. All right, so that's done. We can close and disconnect. So jumping over back to the beta flight, we can connect. All right, so once that's all set up, I do wanna use bi-directional D-shot, so I'm going to turn this one on. Dynamic notch values change. This change will enable disable RPM filtering, increase, increasing or decreasing the filter delay effectiveness. Reset dynamic notch filters to recommended values. Agree. I'm going to accept what the beta flight devs are going to be the right settings, so I've set it there. Okay, so what we'll also need to do is to check out the motor directions. Um, and reorder the motors just to make sure that they are in the right order. So Quad X is what I've got as this is a quad copter. Um, we, we can turn them motors reversed as well. And I've got it plugged in. I need to uh, accept this, understand the risks. I don't have any props on 
and um, motor test is disabled until settings have been saved. Oh, that's right, I forgot to save the settings that I've changed here. Save and reboot. Okay, so that's done. And then we can go over here and reorder the motors. So clicking on reorder motors. I understand the risks because I don't have the propellers on, so I can start this. So the one that's spinning right now is this one back here with the quad facing forward. Choose that one. This is the second one that's spinning. There's a third and of course the last. So now I can save and it's going to reboot. Okay, so now the motor direction, let's just check that out. So we'll go motor direction, understand the risks and go to the wizard. So start the motors. You can hear them spin up pretty quick. So I'm just touching it lightly with my finger. So the first one, number one over here is spinning in the right direction, being clockwise. This is not spinning the right way. So this is spinning clockwise as well. So I'll need to re reverse them. So now that's spinning the right way. And the third one here is spinning the correct way, which is anti-clockwise. And this one's not spinning the right way. And I'll turn that one as well. So now it's switched its direction and it's going the right way, which is clockwise. All right, I can stop the motors and close. So there you go. I've just reordered the motors uh, to the right direction. And I think that's it for setting up the motors. Now, I sometimes like to run them with motors out, uh, sorry, the direction of the motors spinning the other way. Um, so flicking this switch would turn them the other way around. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it as pointing inwards. So the motors will, sp uh, propellers will be spinning this way. Um, and I'll try that out. So, that's it for the motors tab. I need to go back to the ports tab, which I mentioned earlier before flashing the beta flight. Um, so I'll need to set the serial RX not to UART2, but UART5. And I'll save and reboot. Okay, so that's done. Um, anything in configuration? I'll leave everything in here for now. I'm gonna call this uh, NXP. Uh, I'm not sure what to call it. UR26, I guess that's the model number. Um, maximum arm angle, so that we can arm while upside down doing turtle mode and other things like that. I'm just gonna, if it's stuck in a tree um, or perched precariously, I wanna arm, so I'll put it as 180, save and reboot. Okay. A few of these things I'm just going to leave it as default for now um, so I can test it, get on the first flight. Power and battery, I'll leave these as the defaults. Fail safe, and this fail safe I want it to drop out of the sky. I don't want to do anything on the presets yet, I'll leave it as the defaults, especially on the pitch tune as well. I've noticed that the pitch tune for Beta Flight 4.3 is really good. Um, it's not much that I'll need to adjust. I can go into a bit more finer pid tuning later on. So I'll leave everything here as the default. Let me check a few things over here. Anti-gravity, throttle boost, motor output limit, it's all good. VBAT sag compensation, I do like to use that just to get a better consistent feel of the motor power from the beginning of the battery to the end. So that just uh, makes sure that at the beginning of the battery when there's a lot of juice in it, um, that it lowers that throttle output at the beginning and once the battery starts to go down to empty, um, that it starts to push up the um, throttle limit up so that the, cons the consistency of the throttle output from the beginning of the battery and the end of the battery is as close as possible. On the receiver side, I do have to set this up since I had to recall and note from earlier that it is serial via UART and then SBUS I have to change to Crossfire for the Express LRS receiver. I'll save and reboot that. Okay, 
So that's all set. I'll leave everything as defaults. On the modes tab, I'm going to have to set these things up. And I'm going to have to pull out the controller to do this. All right, I do have the controller here and powered up, but I'm going to have to um, disconnect the flight controller to power down the Express LRS receiver since it's gone into Wi-Fi mode. So I'm just going to disconnect. Unplug it and take the battery out as well. I'm just going to leave the battery out. I'm not going to need it for the time being. Plugging in the flight controller again and wait till it connects. Okay, so here we are again in the modes tab and the Express LRS receiver has connected with the controller and I do have it all set up here. So there we go. I have the switch as well. So Express LRS, Express LRS uh, the, it's going to keep telling me that it's low battery, so I'm just going to plug in a battery just to keep it to shut up. Come on, telemetry. Okay, there you go. Uh, I have set up telemetry to tell me that there's low battery while I'm flying, but I guess when I don't have a battery plugged in and it's just a flight controller, it um, the controller doesn't know and the voltage is reporting low to uh, the re I guess the controller receiver and it comes up telling me there's low battery so ignore that for now um, but we do have everything set up here and what I was going to tell earlier was the uh, aux one channel for Express LRS needs to be used um, to be the arm uh, as well so I'm going to go through and set that up now all right so I'm going to uncheck the hide unused modes so arm here I'm gonna set up the range I'm gonna to go to add range and then I can go and move this over to the arm position over here and click on auto yep there's gonna be my um, arm switch there so all right so down here we do have a few other things we need to set so I'm gonna set up the horizon angle mode on the switch as well horizon I'm going to add range I don't really use it that much or at all but I just want to set it up I'm going to go down here I'm going to set up the beeper to add range to be this one down here. Uh, telemetry, I'm not going to set up OSD disable black box. And I'm looking for flip over after crash. So I like to have it as the same one as beep. So if I'm not looking for it, um, I'm doing the flip over crash, which is total mode. So if I'm not doing total mode, I can make it as beep. So it's on the same switch as the one I've set up here. Uh, when it does go into total mode and I arm, it stops beeping so that I can flip it over. So I use that as both of those functions. On the prearm, I do have it as well. I like having prearm. So I like having that on this switch here. So I'm just gonna set the one up up here. And I think that is all that I would like to set up. So that's basically it. Once I'm done, I hit on save. All right, so it saved all that. And once I've done that, I like to check it as well by hiding all the unused modes and then having a look at what I've set up here. So I've got the arm, which is good. I've got the angle mode, horizon, and when it's not um, configured, then it goes into acro. Um, and beeper, flip over crash and pre-arm. So those are the settings I like to um, configure for my modes. If you'd like to, me to show that whole process with the video of the controller as well, let me know in the comments and I'll set up a video, but I'm sure there's plenty of other people like Joshua Bardwell who's already done tutorials on that. But if you'd like me to show you how I've set it up here and uh, show how I flick the switches, let me know and I can uh, make another video of that. 
Moving on to a few more configuration things here. Adjustments, I'm gonna leave as is. Servos I don't use. Motors, this is to check the motors that we did earlier. OSD, um, I'm just gonna set a few basic ones up. So I like to have the battery average cell voltage. So I've selected that, I'll move it. I like it up in the top left. I like the um, <clears throat> battery voltage as well, the full battery voltage, just to have that on top of the average. Um, that's mainly the ones that I always look at. Um, there are some other things that I do have, like I think it's battery current draw. It's not that useful, but I just like to have it on the screen here in the bottom left. Uh, battery uh, current milliamp draw. So I put that there. Warnings I leave in the middle. And I sometimes also have the display name, I think it is. No, it's not that. Craft name. Here it is. And I'll put it up the top here. Because I'm pretty sure I know what quad I'm flying when I plugged it in. So not really useful, but I just like to have that there. Um, altitude, uh, that's one thing I like to put on as well, but I don't think that this flight controller has a barometer, so no use in putting that on. Alright, so that's a basic setup, so we've got a video transmitter. I mentioned earlier that the uh, VTX table I couldn't get working properly, so I can't control the video transmitter from Betaflight. Um, hopefully we can resolve that soon. Sensors, nothing there. Uh, tethered logging, black box, we can sort or of, well, use black box later to do a bit of the pit tuning. But for now, I'm just going to test it with the first uh, flight test. So there we go. Um, that's basically the initial setups that I go through for beta flight, um, especially on this uh, TCM MRC Mermaid UR26 um, quadcopter, the flight controller. So um, the next thing is basically going out to do some pre checks, pre flight checks, and then doing a simple flight with a hover, line of sight, and then we will try and get our first flight with the goggles on, um, taking around the park and seeing what it can do on initial flight, not take, not pushing it so hard, just taking it easy. Um, and then once after I'm happy with that and comfortable with it, then we can start pushing it a bit harder. So let's go out for a test flight. All right, so this is the first test flight and I'm just going to try and arm and hover a little bit. What the... Here's what I forgot to do. Um, checking the uh, direction of the flight controller. The flight controller, when I plug it in and look at the direction of the quadcopter, it doesn't align with how it looks on the image here. So the arrow needs to be pointing in the direction of the front of the quad, but when I tilt it to the left, you can see that it actually pitches back. So to correct that, for the way that I installed this flight controller, I have to change the configuration yaw to be 90 degrees. All right, that's gonna save and reboot. And let's go give it another try. All right, take two. I'm just gonna arm and take off. Hopefully this time it won't flip out and hover in the same spot. So here we are out at my testing facility, also known as a cricket pitch cage. So just going to take a first flight again like last time. Got a bit of punch in there. Alright, so we know that's going okay. Just going to do a, uh, just going to disarm here.
All right, so just gonna do it out in a bit of a larger field. Just to test it, gonna take it easy. Got a bit of jitters in there. I'm not sure what's going on. Probably have to do a bit of a pitch tuning. These are on uh, stock pids and rates. I haven't changed anything. Not sure if you can hear it there, but it's a uh, twitching. I'm gonna roll left and right. I'm just gonna go into FPV and uh, see how it goes around the park. Okay, so here we are. We've got a bit of flight footage from uh, the drone. And I'm recording this through the DJI Goggles V2 using an analog uh, receiver. And this analog receiver is very old. It is from a Fat Shark Teleporter V3. And if anyone knows what that is, it is an ancient goggle with the um, yeah very bad receiver. So it's something that I just have on hand and I've kind of just harvested. Uh, to play around with and getting working with the uh, goggles v2 with the analog input so you can see that there sometimes it does get um, some you know changes in contrast and it, the image constantly looks washed out but uh, that's what I've got here to record the analog DVR so I uh, as you heard earlier uh, and saw in the video there were a bit of stuttering and jitters that was happening during the flight uh, in our testing so I was worried that it would be a gyro issue and indeed I think it is so after a bit of testing and trying to debug it I've uh, determined that it is a bad gyro on the flight controller so when we do find out this and we get the jitters when you roll or pitch um, forward and back uh, there's not much you can do uh, the bad gyro on this one. There's only one gyro on the flight controller, so I can't even revert to using one of Joshua Bardwell's tricks where you can choose uh, which gyro to use. So you can actually switch off the one that is bad and use the secondary one. But this one, I can't do that, so I might have to just replace the flight controller. So unfortunately, after all of this building, that I have to do that, but it, it is what it is. So if anyone else has the same issue and has found the same problem with this quad um, and they have received a bad gyro in the uh, the, the, the drone, uh, let me know down in the comments just to see if there's it's a common issue with this or not. Um, now a bad gyro isn't always related to the cheap quality flight controllers that you get. I mean, I believe it would happen more often but it does happen on more expensive ones as well so um, you know you take your chances with something cheap you might might happen a bit more but it has happened here unfortunately oh well at least I had a bit of fun building it and I still can play around with it a bit and I will replace the flight controller in time and we'll get uh, this thing up in the air and be able to fly a bit more aggressively and have more fun anyhow that's gonna do it for this video so I hope you enjoyed the series and I hope you enjoyed learning throughout this whole series. I, I did indeed. Uh, many things that I stumbled across through this process. But it is all part of the fun. I um, not only like just the flying part of it, but the whole journey of building it from scratch. Learning every bit of it, the new technologies that I incorporated into this. And it's something that we'll continue to do over many years. So, hope you enjoyed it, learned something. Take care everyone. Cheers.